Coming up on today's show, Rivian patents a new charging technology that could see it produce the fastest charging EV yet. A California official says that Tesla's looking to build special 12-seat vans for use in a brand new boring company tunnel. And Germany enacts a new law that requires every gas station across the nation to offer charging for electric vehicles. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another 10. If you're watching this, you've managed to survive another week. And if like me, you're feeling the emotional strain of dealing with the last seven days, if you're trying to pass how a minority of criminals and extremists hell-bent on derailing peaceful protests have turned to people against one another, are questioning how some in law enforcement are being seen time and time again abusing and hurting and killing people, and how a government turned on its own citizens in order to have a photo op for its leader, well, I hope the next 15 to 20 minutes will give you some positive news to hear. And that's not to drown out the sorrows of the world and the injustices our society doles out based on skin colour, but rather to be a way of rejuvenation so you're ready to tackle the next news cycle head on. I hope I am too. And yes, if you're curious, I'm aboard at the actions of the president of the country I now call home. I am aboard by the way that people of colour are treated by many in this land. The assault of a peaceful senior that resulted in him sustaining severe brain injury. And, and I hope that those of you outside the US can see that this country is far more than the actions of an angry man and those who follow him. I know many will be upset by me even mentioning this, but I would be negligent in my own morals if I didn't. You may be white like me, but that doesn't mean we need to sit by and ignore what's going on. <sighs> Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for their sponsorship of today's show. Find out how to join them and how to accelerate the switch to electric today by going to electricauto.org. Rivian has been in the news quite a lot this week, laying off 40 of its staff at its Plymouth, Michigan facility while simultaneously hiring new former Tesla engineers connected with the supercharger network. Rivian says the layoffs were performance-based and account for less than 2% of the company's total workforce, but the hires suggest that the company is looking to build its own charging network. If we add in the news received at the end of the week that Rivian has just successfully patented a new battery technology to allow 300 kilowatt rapid charging, I think you can see where this is going. According to the patent, Rivian's developed a way to switch battery wiring internally for the purposes of charging, allowing a 400 volt battery pack to use an 800 volt charging station simply by rewiring how the cells connect on the fly. As we know more about this tech, we will of course share. In September, it will be five years since the Dieselgate scandal hit the headlines, but this week, the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, sitting in Anchorage, Alaska, passed a judgment that could see Volkswagen continue to pay for its misdeeds. In a landmark, unanimous decision, the three-judge panel ruled that even though Volkswagen has settled at a federal and state level, paying massive fines for illegally circumventing emissions regulations with certain diesel vehicles, the automaker is not exempt from being prosecuted at the county level. This not only means that counties across the US can now file action against Volkswagen for violating air quality standards, but it also means that Volkswagen could rightly end up paying billions of dollars per year in fines for the time those vehicles were on the road. It's likely we'll see this go to the Supreme Court. Nissan has been promoting the advances made to its electric all-wheel drive system this week, publishing new videos of its prototype all-wheel drive Nissan Leaf going through its paces. In a press release talking about the system, Nissan says the E4ORCE system, pronounced E-Force, offers, quote, powerful performance and unprecedented control. But while the E-Force system is being demonstrated in a Nissan Leaf, and looks pretty good fun from behind the wheel, I wouldn't expect we'll see an all-wheel drive Leaf anytime soon. Instead, expect Nissan, which as I pointed out a few shows ago, is pretty cash-strapped, to debut this system in its upcoming Nissan Aria, the only new non-Japanese Nissan EV to come to market in the next few years. At the moment, if you want a Tesla-built electric vehicle with the capability to seat more than five adults, 
you'll need to get yourself a Tesla Model X. At least that's until the Model Y starts being offered with more seats. But this week, San Bernardino County Supervisor Kurt Hagman said that Tesla is about to start building a 12-seat electric passenger vehicle, not for public resale, but rather for use in the new Boring Company tunnel between Rancho Cagamora with Ontario International Airport in California. The proposal, which has been given the go-ahead to proceed to the next phase of planning, would need to shuttle 10 million people per year, hence the need for a large vehicle a vehicle that was larger than originally planned. Neither Tesla nor the Boring Company has officially announced anything. We're all used to the idea that autonomous vehicles will help lower accidents and deaths on our roads, perhaps even ending them completely. And in traditional automotive circles, the idea that we can lower accidents and deaths to zero has constantly been put forward as a utopian future that we can look forward to. But a new study from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety suggests that goal is far from achievable. Studying more than 5,000 crashes in detail, the IIHS says that while autonomous vehicles may be able to prevent one third of all of the accidents we have today, they cannot prevent all accidents. That's because current autonomous vehicle technology isn't perfect and likely never will be. It's statistically implausible that we can prepare autonomous vehicles for every eventuality. It's no secret that Tesla has been busy acquiring companies over the last few years that will enable it to bring the entire vehicle production process in-house. It's even been buying companies that focus on building the machines used in the vehicle production process. This week, Electrek uncovered a small purchase of a small automotive production equipment specialist that was made by Tesla in 2017. The company specializes in equipment for automotive production lines, specifically automating them. The company is called Compass Automation and it's based in a small city outside of Chicago. And while it still operates under its original name, Tesla's job site has just posted job listings for the company this week, calling electrical and mechanical machine builders to come and work on building, installing and supporting Tesla's automated production line process. We know Tesla recently purchased more robots for its facilities, and it looks like fully automated is the way the firm will go. While its vehicles are no longer available in many countries around the world, General Motors has been a reasonably consistent part of the plug-in marketplace since 2010. And this week, Reuters reported that GM has been working on developing its own electric van, aimed primarily at delivery firms and business users. Given that we know GM is working on several electric pickups, it's not a stretch to assume the delivery vehicle would share some of the underpinnings with the same. And with GM's Ultium battery system designed from the ground up to be modular, it's highly likely that this report is credible. Reuters also suggests such a vehicle would allow GM to compete against Ford and Rivian in the electric delivery van segment, as well as get a leg up on Tesla, which has yet to announce any commercial delivery van solution. As it exits the hell of the last wave of coronavirus, Germany's Angela Merkel has relieved a new 130 euro economic recovery plan that includes legislation to mandate that all petrol stations in the nation provide electric car charging too. While Germans are starting to buy more electric vehicles, only 3.3% of all cars registered last month were electric, up from 1.8% in the entirety of 2019. In order to meet its Paris Accord targets and to shift away from fossil fuels, Germany needs to transition its nation's fleet to electric quickly, and putting electric charging at existing filling stations makes total sense. It not only makes it easier to find a charging station, but it's easier for owners transitioning to electric for the first time. The first 500 examples of the AI Waze U5 electric SUV from Chinese automaker AI Waze are on their way to Europe. The automaker, which up until this point was a Chinese market-only brand, is expanding its operations and assuming it can deliver on reliability, could make some serious waves in the EV marketplace. That's because a top-spec U5, which is about the same size as a Tesla Model Y, could retail from as little as €40,000 before incentives and offer a WLTP test cycle range of around 250 miles. The first batch of U5s will be used by Hertz Rental on the island of Corsica, but private sales should follow soon. And now it's time for short shorts. 
Mercedes-Benz has published a teaser photo of the production version of the EQS electric sedan undergoing final testing. While we've seen what the EQS concept looks like, we've yet to see what the final production will. Expect a reveal later this year. The Boring Company is looking to extend the loop tunnel system it's building under the Las Vegas Convention Center. Currently, the loop is being built between the site's various exhibition halls, but permission is being sought to extend it to the Encore Casino, the first one on the Strip. Elon Musk was reportedly in the UK this week, engaged in negotiations with various organizations about establishing a Tesla Gigafactory facility there. Rumors suggest that the Somerset Levels is a prime candidate, but nothing firm has been confirmed yet. Bollinger has received a pair of patents for the front gate and pass-through elements of its B1 and B2 electric vehicles. These two devices, when used together, allow long items to be loaded from the front of the vehicle and to pass through to the rear low bait area. Tesla has enjoyed a second month of being the UK's best-selling car. Although it is fantastic to see an EV at the top of the sales charts, I'd be remiss for not pointing out that many people in the UK are not buying cars at all right now, and car sales are at the lowest they've been for 70 years. A new study in Toronto, Canada, says that the net benefits of transitioning to zero emission vehicles is equivalent to 10,000 Canadian dollars per EV on the road. That's because of the improvement in air quality, improvements in community health, and more. Rivian has trademarked two new names for use on future vehicles. Rivian R1V and R2X. Given what we know about Rivian, I'm guessing that the R1V might be a van based on the R1T pickup, and the R2X might be a sportier, go-anywhere SUV. James Dyson has been talking about the reasons for cancelling his plans to mass-produce an electric car, especially after producing a functional prototype. Blaming batteries, he said there just wasn't cost-effectiveness there, which is contrary to what many auto industry experts now say. Volvo's electric brand Polestar and Koenigsegg have published an enigmatic photograph on Instagram, suggesting that there is a collaboration in the pipeline. Koenigsegg is of course known for its high-power hypercars, but its founder has gone on the record in the past saying he'd like to make an EV. Chinese battery specialist and electric vehicle company BYD will begin to supply Ford with batteries for use in its electric vehicles. According to documents published, the batteries will be used in a Chinese market plug-in hybrid model built by Ford's Chinese partner. Audi has launched a new product with the internal codename of Project Artemis. The project's goal is to produce a brand new, super efficient electric vehicle that can become something of a new halo model for the brand. It could be on the road in as little as four years. French automaker Peugeot is considering an all-electric version of its popular 3008 crossover. A plug-in hybrid model already exists, but with increased demand in Europe for electric models, a fully electric version makes a lot of sense. As part of its massive post-COVID stimulus package for the auto industry, Germany has increased subsidies for electric vehicles. In addition to currently lowering purchase tax for the next few months, buyers of new EVs can get double the incentives they previously could. Fiat Chrysler is testing a new GPS-enabled technology that could force its plug-in hybrids to operate as electric vehicles when in cities with zero emission zones. It's great to see a way to reduce emissions like this, but frankly, it's easier to just go fully electric. An examination of data from ZapMap in the UK has led one UK charging manufacturer to conclude that for every 55 plug-in vehicles on the nation's roads, there is just one public charging station. This highlights the urgent need for a massive expansion in charging provision. A British project called Rare has established based on University of Birmingham processes for extraction and demagnetization of certain alloys from electronics. The hope is that the company can build rare earth magnets from recycled components to be used in EVs. A Taiwanese Tesla Model 3 was filmed on security cameras this week, crashing headlong into an overturned truck on a Taiwanese highway. The driver said autopilot was engaged. Earlier this week, we made a video on this and we apologize on behalf of myself and the rest of the team for using China and Taiwan interchangeably. Thank you to those who pointed out my error. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. We're often asked who killed the electric car. And of course, if you know the film from the same name, the immediate answer might be GM, Toyota, Ford and others. 
But in Indiana, the Blue Indy Electric Car Share project has just come to its official end after a lack of interest from the public in shared community electric vehicles. As reported this week, many of the vehicles from the program have now been taken to the scrapyard for crushing and recycling, with battery packs and usable parts salvaged for second life and spares. The best condition Blue Indy cars, meanwhile, will be heading to Los Angeles to join the LA fleet of rideshare vehicles from the same company responsible for Blue Indy. It's great to see these projects pop up in cities, but frankly, unless we start using them, they won't last and we'll only have ourselves to blame. And finally, coal-fired power stations have long been part of the power generation mix of the electrical grid. And depending on where you live, how much power comes from coal can vary from a few percent all the way up to 60 percent or more. But the UK has just celebrated a very special milestone that we should all celebrate, especially if we're interested in getting the grid cleaner and greener. For the past 55 days and counting, the UK hasn't burned a single piece of coal to provide power to the national grid. While the grid mix still has some fossil fuels in it, including natural gas, coal hasn't been used. And that means that May was the first ever month ever in the UK in which it was completely coal free for its electricity needs. I don't know about you, but that's a great piece of news. And here's hoping that other grids can still follow suit, especially the ones that use a lot of coal. And on that piece of good news, it is the end of this week's show. But before I go, I'd like to thank the Electric Auto Association for sponsoring today's news roundup. They've been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, where to attend local monthly meetups, or just to find EV owners to talk to about making your own switch to electric by going to electricauto.org. We'd love it if you would like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't, as well as our companion channel, Take Two. And if you feel able, please consider supporting us using the links below. I haven't addressed this directly recently, but I am very grateful to all of you who've managed to continue supporting us during this difficult time. We've had to pay rental on a building we've not been able to use. And in just over a month, we will be completely free of that commitment. But without your support, we would most definitely not be able to even have continued to produce these videos. And if you're unable to support financially, well, know that just watching and interacting with our content really does help the algorithms. So if you do, thank you. I'll be back soon with another show. So thanks for joining me. Stay healthy, work to make the world a fairer, safer place for us all to live. Strive for equality, be kind to another and wash your hands. Keep evolving.